Okay. So. Good morning, those on the recording, or whatever time it is, where you are listening to this. And welcome to our slow flow this morning. And we're going to get right into it. So just finding yourself a comfy seat. Maybe you're sitting up on a block or a bolster. Maybe the sitting bones are resting down on the floor. Finding a comfortable seat where the knees are happy and we feel like the lower back raises out of the pelvis with a nice natural curve. And then breathing in deeply, raising the shoulders towards the ears. Exhaling, slowly drawing the shoulder blades down the back. Maybe a little light engagement in the tummy. Inhale, mm, maybe a nice morning stretching feeling. And ah, maybe a sigh on the exhale as we gently draw the shoulder blades together. And just one more, these nice sort of morning movements. Maybe the arms float up. Mm. Circle down, shoulder blades coming down. Gently resting the palms or the back of the hands on the thighs. For now, whichever configuration just makes your shoulders feel a little bit more open and soft. And I've been thinking a lot about um, how yoga teachers tend to use the elements as examples. And we say the earthiness of this or the fieriness of that. And it's maybe a little wishy-washy and unscientific for some, you know, and that's okay. Um, when I started, I didn't want any metaphysical content in my yoga. I just wanted to move. But equally, I think that whether it's scientific or not, we all understand these ideas of earthiness is this stable base, this ability to take a knock, and fire is this will to, to conquer, to overcome, to change the state of things. And it kind of makes sense. And then kind of based off what something someone else brought into a class this week, I thought, what if there was an element more of life, of maybe of plant life or you know, single cell life, this simple life, the fungus that's all around us, that surrounds us, but is also... I think perhaps 50% of our body weight when you look at our microbiome. And so this head creature that feels like it looks out from our eyes um, shares its vessel with, you know, trillions of other little beings. And I thought that's a pretty, pretty fun and interesting concept. So maybe this plant element is, is, is vibrancy and it's growth and it's also community and it's interacting with an unseen and vast network around us and sustaining and being sustained by that network. So perhaps this morning we will be little plants together. Mm. Hopefully that will brought a little smile to your face. And now let's start moving. We've only got an hour together. Let's see how those hands are. Maybe blink the eyes open. And just raising the eyes and the forehead to gently look up between the hands. Check in with the back of the neck. Might be a bit stiff. It's the morning. Exhale. Bring the palms down like you're dragging the fingers down the silk curtain, sliding the fingers down the silk curtain. And rolling the chin to the chest. Bring the hands down and back. And perhaps this rolling over, continues. The spine is making a bit of a C shape. And let's raise up again. So we'll start from the tummy, lifting, stacking the vertebrae. Chin comes up with the hands and we look up. Exhale to circle the hands behind and interlink the fingers, drawing the hands away from the body and rolling the shoulders back. Take another nice inhale, 
open the chest a little bit more, tiny baby back bend. Exhale again, we're dropping the chin to the chest and we're rolling into our C shape and maybe this time those interlinked hands lift away from the body. A small amount or maybe a medium amount if it's there. Inhale, lift the chest again. And this time rolling forwards, exhale, let go of the hands, place the hands in front of you. And it's a soft forwards fold, forward fold, forehead moving towards the mat, just arriving wherever it arrives. Your forehead might be on the mat, you might be on stacked hands or a block, or you might just be at a gentle 45 degree angle. Inhale. So if we can start this movement, lifting from the tummy so that the engagement of the tummy just brings the hands off the floor and we don't push off the floor. And again, inhaling up the hands and then we're twisting to the right. Left hand to right thigh or knee, right fingers landing behind us. Inhaling to find space between each vertebrae and then as we exhale, Twisting from the very base of the spine, just a little bit more. Inhaling to center, unravel the spine. Exhale, we're winding it up the other way. Imagining you could move each vertebrae one at a time from the very lowest to the very top. One more exhale here, softening into your twist. And then inhaling, unraveling the spine again. One more twist again to the right. This time, see if you can hook the fingers of the left hand over the top of the thigh. Leave that hand where it is. Inhale, right hand up and over, side bending left, left hand gripping right thigh. Lovely. Inhale, find space in the lower spine and the ribs. Exhale, side bend a little deeper if it's there. Inhale, both hands up. Exhale, twisting left. Inhaling, right hand up. Side bend into the other side. Definitely intended to mirror you there, but I think I got lost somewhere. Make sure you're side bent to both sides. Inhale to center. Exhale the hands down. And we're going to come onto the back. So if you're sitting on a prop, put that to one side. Scooch the feet out in front. Inhale the hands forward. And gently exhale. Roll the spine down onto the mat. A nice steady pace. If you need to use your hands to support you, of course, use your hands. Ah, so just bring the fingertips onto the body. We start moving the knees to left and right. And let's see if there's any place you're drawn to put your hands anywhere that it might be nice to massage out a little bit around the fing uh, with the fingers. And then we'll come to a little supine pigeon. So let's pick up the uh, pick up the right foot, circle out through the ankle, squishing the toes, and then we'll cross the right ankle over the left thigh. Come up onto the toes of the left foot. Inhale here, and then exhale. See if you can draw this left thigh towards you. So rather than going and grabbing the leg straight away. See how far you can bring that leg in just using the activation of the left leg. Mm. Pause here. Inhale, then exhale. Push that right ankle into the left thigh as if you're pushing the left thigh away and resist. So you're squeezing the left knee in and you're pushing the right ankle, the right leg away. 
Flex the toes strongly back towards the knee on both feet. This will help keep the knee safe. Now maybe you can push so hard with the right leg that you can move the left leg away. If the back starts hurting, come back a little bit. So we're resisting. We're pushing the left uh, thigh into the right foot and we're pushing the thigh away with the right foot. Relax the right leg. Inhale, left knee back towards you. And one more time. So we're pushing the left knee away with the right ankle whilst resisting as strongly as we can using that left thigh. And this is a really interesting kind of compound. Relax, inhale it back in, both feet down. That's kind of compound strength building, fascia stretching idea. And I picked up during the week, and I think it's really, really effective for building strength and flexibility. So we're going to take that on the other side. So again, we're crossing. Now the left ankle over the right thigh, inhaling onto the toes of the right foot, left leg soft, exhaling, drawing that right knee towards us. Let's get the feet switched on here. Draw the toes back towards the knee. And then first it's this static, squeezing the knee in, moving the ankle in. So we're, we're very, very engaged here. The legs are working very hard. Obviously, any funny feeling in the knee, you soften it off. And then we're drawing the right leg away with the left leg, keeping an eye on the engagement of the belly, the lower back, on the core, really stable and immobile. Soften, exhale it back in. And one more time, this slow. You could be shaking a little bit here. It should be strong here. Slowly drawing it away. So we're really strengthening these hip muscles, these quads, and the core, whilst hopefully leaving a psoas soft. Draw it in. And the lower back happy. Let it go. Let's get the feet up in the air. Let's give the feet a little shake out. Really nice. We're going to come to a bit more core work here. So and find your level. And it's either going to be a knees bent, hands down, legs coming towards straight or straight, and the top level might be to lift up the head and the shoulders. So it's finding what's good for you. We don't want the lower back in any discomfort whatsoever. And we're just lowering the legs down. So we might be just here. And it's all about don't reach with the uh, heel. Open the hip and let the hip, the heel, the foot move from the eye opening of the hip. So again, if up here, we're not thinking swinging, we're thinking opening the hip and the work's happening here. So, and, you know, there is the two-sided one. Absolutely. Um, if, you, if that's what you need this early in the morning, you can go ahead and take two legs. So wherever you're at, we'd like to take, oh, maybe let's say 10 more. Opening the hip, inhaling the leg back up. Really being honest with yourself. Is the lower back doing the work or is the tummy doing the work? If the lower back's doing the work, you're just going to get a small lower back. Better to take smaller movement, keep it honest, build the strength. Really nice. Feet back up in the air, get the hands up in the air as well. Dead bug asana, everything flopping about. Everything flopping about, shaking it out. Really nice. Okay, stretch. And we'll come out into a dish pose. Toes reaching away. 
Maybe the head and shoulders lift, maybe they don't. Inhale it up. Fingertips towards toes. Exhale it down. Inhale it up. Exhale it down. Inhale it up. Bend the knees. Head and shoulders down if they're up. Relax. Well, that was all a bit cortastic, wasn't it? Let's just rock the uh, pelvis from side to side. Massaging the top of the pelvis, sacrum. And we'll come for our bridge. So, feet are facing straight away from me. The second toe is facing straight forwards. The heels are broadly underneath the knees. Shoulders are set. Backs of the hands down. Roll the pelvis so that the lower back flattens onto the mat, what they call imprint in Pilates. Next, we exhale. It's like we're sliding the feet away, sliding the feet under a rug, opening up through the top of the back. And again, we're looking for that happy lower back. And we're getting that with the engagement of the feet moving away, the shoulders rooting down. Bummy working. And maybe we reach the fingertips to the ceiling here. Draw the elbows down, fingertips, uh, forearms upright. And maybe we can use the elbows pressing into the floor a little bit to raise the hips just a little bit. Feel the glutes really switch on now. We're going to roll the spine back down. So we're exhaling, placing each vertebrae down in turn, rolling it out. I'm ready for another round. Inhale. Set the pelvis. Exhale. Energy. Feet going away from you. Raising it up. Bring the elbows in. Squeeze the glutes. Squeeze the inner thighs like you're gripping a block. Exhale. Roll it out. Lay it down like a sheet of fresh pasta dough. You don't want to tear. Really just smooth. One more. Tilt the pelvis, in, out, exhale, energy through feet, quads on, adductors on, glutes on, open the heart, breath moving nice and easily, in and out. Maybe open the heart just a little more, lift the hips just a little more, and then exhale it out, roll out your sheet of dough. Wiggle out the knees. Lovely. And let's roll on the spine a little bit. So maybe the hands come to the back of the thighs. And let's get this rock and rolling up and down the spine going on. When you're coming forward, see if we can get a little bit of hang time. And we're really nice and soft here. Just pausing at the top. Maybe you extend the hang time a second or two more. And roll it back. And this time, stop in the softest of soft bridges. Check that you're really, really, really yummy and soft there. And then exhaling, we're dropping the knees to the left and we're rolling back. And we're inhaling, center, really, really soft. Only thing working is the tummy. Exhaling, knees to the right. Inhale. Exhale, knees to the left. Inhale. Exhale, knees to the right. Inhale it up. Now, maybe we can bring the hands to the back of the thighs here. Maybe the hands float. And we'll just take a few breaths in on Avasana, wherever that happens to be this morning, in our boat. Mm. Possibly to bring our plant theme in, we could be sailing on a sea of plankton. Oh, yes. Stretch it out a bit. Stretch it out a bit. Really nice. One more breath. In, pull, exhale. Flop it out. Just come forwards. Hug the knees. Rounding the spine. <sighs> Draw yourself up. And let's come on to all fours. And let's get that spine really juiced up now. 
So coming to some free movement with the spine here. Toes are tucked, wrists under shoulders, knees under the hips. And you can see here, I'm just drawing the hips from side to side, engaged through the hands, through the feet. And maybe it's a bit more of a wiggle. I'm bringing the head into it, so curving the spine from side to side. Maybe you're doing something completely different that just feels great, and I'd really encourage that. And then maybe there's some sort of spiraling, twisting actions. Like you're dancing some sort of hot Latin dance rather than hanging out in a cold house. Ah. A really sensuous and expressive wiggle about, and then settle it down again. A little bit for the wrists here. Toes tucked, and we're just pushing off, and we're just leaning over the wrists. Now, for everybody, there's going to be a different amount of travel here. At some point, it's going to hurt. Try not to stay in the place of it hurting. Exhale back. Maybe move the knees away. Inhale it forwards. Fingertips are really gripping the mat here. Exhale back, maybe send the bum all the way back, mini child's pose, stretch the lower back. Crawl the hands away a hand length. Inhale, round it forwards and keep coming forwards, keep coming forwards. And we'll back bend, top toes, sort of almost an upward dog there. Exhale it back, bending those elbows back, pushing the hands forwards. And now our waves, our dynamic cat cows. Inhaling, lifting from the belly, hands light, flowing forwards. We reach the top, chin lifts, bum lifts, exhale back. This is wave, curling forwards, exhaling back, sticking the bum in the air. And it's very, it's a cat cow, but it's moving. And you probably noticed that the inhale and exhale positions are reversed from your sort of bog standard cat cow, and that's okay. Now, how do we play with this? So we've got a few options for play here. What if we energize, what if we strengthen left foot and right hand? And what does that do to your movement? There's no right answer here, there's no wrong answer here but some sort of lateral component is brought in by pushing through opposite uh, ground contact points. Change it, right foot and left hand. Still moving with the breath. I'm probably moving forwards and back in one inhale though. So. This doesn't need to be strictly one breath, one movement here. And now our last little bit of play with this dynamic uh, cat cow is can we scooch it forwards and scooch it very low and back and float it forwards and maybe dip into one elbow and then flow back very low. Inhale forwards and lower into the other elbow. Just find the place that's good for you. And then exhale it back. So we might move the hands in a little bit and it might be smaller. Let's see if we can get a little bit of this moving the body weight mainly with one of the arms in. We're building some strength around the shoulders, the delts, triceps. Inhale it forwards one more time and give the head a nice shake. Let the face be floppy like a Cartoon dog with a sad face. Droopy the dog. Mm. And now, yes, I'm... Uh, let's extend the legs away. So when I'm bringing my leg back here, resisting the temptation to roll the hip and fly the leg in the air, I'm pushing the door shut behind me. The hip stays flat. Lower back's not involved. I'm just kicking that door shut. 
When you're ready, add the hand, left hand up, right foot up. Exhale, knee and elbow under the body, curl it in. Inhale away. Keep the trunk as still as possible. Exhale it in. Inhale it out. This time we're going to grab the foot if it's available. Bend the knee. Open it out. And using the pressure of the foot into the hand, open the shoulder so the left shoulder is getting drawn back. Open the chest. Gently let go of the foot, replace that hand. Exhale, leg back. Draw the knee in. Little wiggle. Always recommend a little wiggle, really, whenever you can get one in. Toes are strong here, it helps to engage. And that foot is going back. Add the hand. Exhale, draw it in under the body. Inhale it away. Exhale it under the body. Inhale it away. And again, we're grabbing the foot. So exhale, bending the knee. Inhale, open it out. Grab a hold of that foot. Anyway, so we're driving just like in our camel, driving off the toe, opening the shoulder, gazing forwards and up. Strong belly. Open heart. One more breath in. Gently replace the hand. Replace the knee. Inhale, lift the gaze. Exhale, unshut the toes. Couple of breaths in child's pose. Buttocks to heels. Hands reaching forwards. Active fingers on the mat. Soft facial features. And again here, try to, this is a great chance to develop the ability to breathe into the back. So imagine as your breath comes in, you can move the shoulder blades apart, increase the space between the ribs, but the belly can remain still so that the torso remains heavy on the thigh. And yet the breathing is full and deep unrestricted if that sounds weird or impossible trust me that it's not and as the body reveals these little mysteries as we progress the sense of satisfaction is very valid very real let's come back up tuck those toes and let's lift ourselves into a soft, downward-facing top. So now downward dog. Ah, key things to look for are distance between the fingertips and the hips and between the heels and the hips. You might want to gently pedal out your dog here. It's a bit of a oh, it's a bit of a trap to fall into. What? You've lost me. What's happened there? Oh, it's muted. That's not good, is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh dear, well, okay. Looks like my internet's struggling a little bit. Let's stop the stream. Hopefully we're okay. We're in a downward dog. Let's come and meet again in a downward dog. Finding that distance between the fingertips and the shoulders, between the shoulders and the hips, between the hips and the feet. And as we increase the distance between the knees and the hips, between the heels and the knees, maybe the heels soften away. Maybe as they soften away, 
draws her knees a little straighter. And now let's come up onto the tiptoes, onto the balls of the feet, and turn the heels to the left, the knees to the right, when this little corkscrew, the little squat, and then straighten it out. Feet are facing forwards, and on the exhale, heels to the right and the knees to the left, this little corkscrew squat. Inhale it, back to your downward dog up onto the balls of the feet again and then we're going to take these little baby steps little baby baby steps maybe you can take 20 steps coming towards the hands coming towards the front of the mat when you come to the front of the mat inhale up onto the fingertips looking for this nice straight or natural curve in the lower back exhale empty the tummy empty the tummy lower the body with respect onto the thighs. Mm, thanks body, you're great. Let the head go, let the head be really heavy. And let's inhale and roll up. Who comes up last? Draw the hands above the head. Exhale the hands down to the heart. Open the hands beside you. This is Tadasana, mountain pose. Look at your feet for a second. Usually the uh, heels will be a little further apart than the big toe. And the second toe is facing straight forwards. When you've found that, see what happens if you just have the muscular activation of drawing the heels together and tucking the pelvis under slightly. And you probably feel activation in the inner thigh, in the lower belly. It's active, strong mountain legs. Open the shoulders. Let the crown of the head float and draw in the chin. Maybe the head needs a little wiggle here. Maybe the eyes close down for a moment, finding the stillness in between movements and let's find a little chair we're gently sending the bum back the weight is equal over the feet crown of the head reaches away maybe the arms are here with the biceps uh, by the ears maybe the hands are in prayer we drop a little lower Maybe we drop a little lower, and then let's inhale up, and exhale, sir. Find a yummy forward fold. Inhale halfway up, a nice flat back. Exhale, bend in the knee so the hands find the floor. Step in the right foot back, step in the left foot back. Find this nice high plank. Let's drop the knees down for the first one. Inhale to open the shoulders. Exhale, we're coming forwards. Oh, half chaturanga, not a chaturanga. Untap the toes. Hands are very gently on the mat. Inhale, baby cobra. Maybe the hands float. Tops of the feet press into the floor. Exhale down. Again, baby cobra. Maybe a little higher, hands floating or not. Exhale, roll it down. This time add the feet if you wish. Inhale, open it out. Exhale, lower yourself down, tuck the toes. On an exhale, bum coming back to child's pose, inhaling, downward dog. Twist the hips from side to side.
pick up the right foot, extend it away, and then opening the hip. Keep the leg towards straight. See what's happened to the shoulder. So my shoulder is lifted, my right shoulder. So just lift the left shoulder a little bit, even them out. And then on an exhale, we'll bend that knee. Point the toes. Draw circles with the right knee. Big as we can. Big as we can. Take it the other way. Painting these giant O's with the right knee. Strengthening the hip, moving the fluid through the hip joint. When you finish your next one, extend the leg away and you might come onto the ball of the left foot. See if you can straighten the hips out. Exhale. Draw the right knee towards the nose, under the body, coming forwards into a plank shape. Maybe you give the knee a little kiss. Exhale that foot, back and away. Inhale the right knee towards the right elbow. Exhale it away. Twisting this time. Exhale. The right knee towards the left elbow. Come as far forwards as you can before you twist. Inhale the right foot up and away and then lower it downward dog. Little bounce, little wiggle. Left leg. Inhale the left leg away. Mm, stretch it and then we're opening the hips again. Bending the left knee, pointing the toes. And then we're drawing those big circles with the left knee this time. Keep the breath going. And the other way. And we're extending that left leg towards straight and just seeing if we can reset the hips with the leg. Inhale and then on your next exhale, drawing the left knee towards the nose. Nice rounded high plank, maybe give the knee a kiss. Send the leg away on the inhale. Exhale, left knee, left elbow, nice and high. Inhale it away. Twisting, coming as far forwards as possible and then exhaling this left knee, right elbow. Inhale it up. Exhale, lower the left foot. Again, just twisting, sending the heels to one side and the other. And then let's keep this twisting motion going as we come towards the front of the mat, tiny steps. Each step, the he heels travel to the other side. A slow dance towards the hands. And when we reach the hands, mm, settle it down. Heavy, heavy head. Maybe we can lift the toes of the left foot and place the left hand under the left foot. Maybe we can do the same with the right hand coming under the right foot. So the gap between the big toe and the second toe is right up at the wrist. And obviously if you fall here, you won't have any hands to catch yourself with. So be careful. Let the head be heavy. As you exhale, see if we can just bring a bit more pressure into the back of the palm. And maybe the fingertips can press into the bottom of the feet and it feels really nice. Inhale, find a bit of length in the spine. And as you exhale, draw the elbows apart, gently encouraging the head towards the feet. 
not setting a goal for this or an expectation. Just feeling into it. One more breath in again. Maybe the spine lengthens out of the pelvis. A shoot budding from its seed. Exhale. Elbows coming out. And you can have a little inspect of your shins here if you open your eyes. And then gently releasing the tension, bringing the elbows gently back together. Releasing one hand, releasing the other hand. A little shake of the head, a little nod of the head. Gently bending the knees, inhaling, rolling it up. Exhale, Tadasana. Palms face forwards, heels draw together. Body is strong. Nice. Inhale, the hands above the head. Exhale. Folding forwards. Inhale to find our half lift, and this time we'll lunge. Step the right foot back. Let the fingertips drag along the floor as the back knee bends. Inhale, pushing off the toes, opening that front of the thigh so the belly is still drawing in, hips are square. And as we push into the back toes, maybe the heart opens a little bit. Exhale. Fingertips outside the right foot. And let's take one more of that. So again, inhale, pushing off those toes. Hands above the head. This time as we exhale, we find a little twist. So twisting, pushing off those toes, twisting to my left, opening the hands. It's all about the energy from the feet here. Another exhale. Inhale to center. Exhale, the hands down beside the feet. Pick up the back knee. Step foot back to join. Drop the knees or full chaturanga if you're ready. Lowering the body down to the mat. Untuck toes. Elbows under shoulders. A sphinx pose here. So a back bend with the forearms placed on the mat. Exhale. Drag the fingers towards you to extend the spine as you lay it down. Tuck the toes. Hands beside the rib cage. Energy in the body. Maybe you're ready for a push-up here. Maybe you come back. Do child's pose. And lift the bum. Down with facing dog. Oh yeah. Ready for our lunge on the other side. We're inhaling, right leg up, extending it away, exhaling. Right leg comes under the body. We place the foot down as gently as we can. Drop the left knee. Inhale. Same deal. Strong back foot. Strong core. Moving from the toes. Exhaling. Framing the foot, seeing how that felt. Inhaling, opening the thigh, lengthening the thigh. Exhale, we're twisting this time to the right, driving it from the back toes as ever, opening out. So all of this twisting energy comes up like a spiral from the back toes and opens out the shoulders like that. Inhale it forwards. Exhale. Framing that front foot. Picking up back knee and this time to step in. Soft forward forward. Gentle unrolling. On the inhale. Gaze forwards. Maybe lift the chin. Maybe open the chest a little bit. Surya Namaskar. The sun salutation in praise to the sun. What more could our plant beings want than sunlight and in fact of course the sun does power us all however indirectly 
Exhale. Bend the knees. Soft, soft, soft chair. Roll it forwards, forwards, forward. Straight inhale into our Ardha Uttanasana, half forward, forward. Exhale, hands to the mat. Left foot goes back this time. Pick it up. As the left foot lands, the fingertips slide along the mat. Back knee down, energy through the toes. Inhale. Open that left hip. Exhaling straight into the twist. Maybe the right fingertips might tickle the back leg. And as you open up, sort of reverse warrior with a knee down on the floor. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, frame the foot and toes lift. We gently draw back into a very gentle Ardha Hanumanas half splits, half Hanuman's pose. One day I'll share some Hanuman myths with you because they're brilliant. Inhale, forwards. Exhale, the hands down. Back to child's pose. Inhale, downward dog. Our last lunge, inhale the left foot up. Exhale, knee under the body. Find where you can step the foot comfortably. And you can then move it on afterwards rather than stamping it down. Try to really get the foot down with a little bit of finesse. Drop the back knee. Energy through the right toes. And exhale, oh sorry, inhale. Opening into our crescent lunge. Maybe you get a bit more depth. Maybe you're ready for that. Exhale to twist. So spiraling from the back toes, using the core to open the body. Hands go wide. Inhale, maybe. Exhale. Back fingers tickle the back leg. Let me take this open. Beautiful twist here. Feeling all this lovely length in the right side. Inhale, hands forward. Exhale, fingertips to the mat. Inhale to open the heart. Exhale, lifting the left toes are gentle. Half splits here. Feeling this lengthening in the hamstring. Exhale, soften. Inhale it forwards to our lunge shape, picking up the back knee, stepping it in, exhaling, folding forwards over the legs. And let's hang for a moment here in our soft forward fold, taking opposite elbows, using the weight of the arms as if they're bags full of wet sand to draw the stem of the spine out of the pelvis the flower pot of the pelvis, we could say. Maybe as we inhale, we gently lift the body off the legs, exhale, caterpillar it out, finding that bit more length between the lumbar vertebrae, flopping it over the thighs, soften the knees, move the weight back over the heels, Inhale, draw the elbows to the side, drawing in the tummy, rounding the back. Exhaling. Inhale, watch me for this flow. The tummy draws in and under, the back's rounded. Exhale. One more of these. Really, really, really strong here. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, the hands down by the sides. Excellent. So inhale, the right knee up. Give it a little wobble. Exhale, send the heel away a little or a lot. Draw the hands down. Inhale, the hands up. Exhaling, kicking away. Inhale, the hands up. And this time as we exhale, Sending that heel backwards. Rolling forwards. Try not to touch down if you can. And we're coming towards our warrior three.
Hips are level. Heels reaching away strongly, like it's pressing against a wall or closing our door again. Inhale. As we exhale, let's lower the back foot with control, turning it out. Inhale, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Try to have the pelvis in line with the long edge of the mat. Hmm, probably won't be entirely possible. But we don't want the back hip rolling forward. Roll the back hip out, tuck the pelvis under, lengthen the spine. Oh, nice tall sunflower reaching out of the earth. Add the arms. Now turn the hands palm facing up. Feel how that opens the shoulders. Exhale, just turn the hands back down. Leave the shoulders where they are. Again, tuck the pelvis under a little bit more. Get stronger in the lower belly. Inhale, flip the front palm only. Leave the legs where they are. Exhale, reverse warrior. Maybe the back hand comes around to find the top of the thigh for a little half bind. All the way around the back. There it is. Gaze forwards and up. Exhale, release the bind. If it's there, straighten the front legs. And we're rolling over towards Trikonasana. This is where you may want to block. A hand could be nicely on the block here to avoid strain. Could rest on the shin. What we again want to avoid is rolling the hips. We want the hips to remain above the leg. Depth will come. Add the top hand on an inhale if that feels yummy. Exhale, maybe find more depth. Spine coming towards parallel with the floor. Inhale. Exhale, gaze to the front foot. Hand comes down to touch the floor behind the front foot. Now imagine you're starting an old lawnmower. Inhale, open it up like you're pulling that ripcord. I'm resting my hand on my ankle here, but fingertips can be on the floor or the block. Whatever works for you. Exhale, roll it down. Maybe you roll it a little bit under. Inhale, start the lawnmower. Open that up. Let's take just one more of these movements. We're running out of time. Dip the hand under. Inhale it up and open. Bend the front knee. Exhale, frame the front foot. Step it back. High plank, vinyasa if you want it, which is chaturanga. Roll onto the tops of the feet. Inhale, back bend. Exhale. Inhale to downward dog. Pedal the feet out. Coming to the front of the mat, you choose little steps or maybe little hops. Might feel nice. Flop it out on the exhale. Inhale up, and we're bringing the left knee with us. Adding on. A little bit more challenge. Checking with the face. Quick smile. Have a little smile. I'm a plant. Yeah. There you go. Feeling good. Sending it back to our warrior three. Exhale. Knee can stay bent as we come forwards. And it's extending away as the head comes forwards as a counterbalance. Strong core. Level hips. Foot kicking that door shut behind us. The toes are pointed at the earth. Another big inhale. As you exhale, lower the back leg down with control, and it's warrior two, right leg forwards. Again, just a little settle. Try to bring this back hip out and round. So I, I always set up by just looking a lot at the long edge of the mat. I don't add on the looking forwards until I'm happy. My hips are as square as they can be. And then add the arms, look forwards over those front fingers. Again, open the shoulders, turn the palms up, and then try to leave the arms and shoulders still. Turn the palms face down. See how that feels. Flipping the front palm. 
Inhale, find your reverse warrior, maybe half bind. Try to keep the front knee nice and bent. Draw the heels together to activate the inner thighs. Exhale, release. And we're coming all the way over to our Trikonasana. So again, using a prop here. If you want, you have a prop there. And that can really take some of the work out and let us find our nice posture there. Or, of course, fingertips down on the shin. Inhale, add the top arm in. Exhale, maybe we open into a little more depth. Ah, feeling the spine lengthening out of the pelvis, pouring out of the pelvis. And we'll take those uh, lawnmower movements again. I'll think of a better name for them. Let's exhale, find the hand rolling under the shin. Inhaling up. So it's like uh, I'm moving the shoulder back, then I'm moving the elbow back, then I'm opening the pack. I'm reaching right up. Exhale, rolling it under. Inhale, shoulder, elbow, open it up, open it up. One more here. Exhale, under. Inhale, roll it up. Fantastic. As we exhale, we, with control, bend the front knee. Frame the foot, turn the back foot up. And again, we'll just see if we can straight back to plank. Take a vinyasa if you want, or rest in child's pose. Mm, just settle in your downward dog or your child's pose for a few breaths. Feeling into the practice. Perhaps if you had an intention or a thought this morning, a theme for your own day, maybe try to bring that back. Or maybe try to connect with your plant nature. And just think about how many millions of bacteria make up your body and perform all its functions and how amazing that is. Let's bend the knees. If you're in your child's pose, come back up to downward dog with the knees bent. And we're taking one more little walk to the front of the mat. Maybe the feet go wide this time. And we hop it up. Hands just inside the feet at the front of the mat. Exhale, bum comes down. Malasana yoga squat. So from here, feel free to stay in your malasana. Maybe you uh, open some twists. You can stay in a bind here. Uh, if you want to have a play with your bakasana, with your crow, this is, uh, this is our arm balance this morning. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing with your crow and you'd like to have a play, I recommend... A landing pad really helps with the feeling of security. Even if you fall over, it's just a very short distance. And uh, I like this soft crow, so the shins are on the back of the arms. And this rocking forwards. We sometimes have our little crow hops here. And maybe we lean forwards and we feel the toes get light and just try picking a foot up and put it down. Try picking the other foot up. Maybe the toes have just become magically so light, they float. If so, maybe you can draw the elbows together and lengthen the crown of the head forwards. And maybe if you're feeling so stable, your crow can have a little dance about. Wherever you're at with it, be kind to yourself. Commitment, acceptance, gratitude. Those are my little themes for today. All of those come into play with something like this. And then you're finished playing with your pro. Hand it down. In our malasana. And let's see if we can wiggle the heels together. 
and we might find this kind of little toe squat here. Fingertips might be down. Maybe the hands lift. Maybe the spine grows tall. Maybe we fall over. Let's let it go. Drop the bum back down to the ground. A nice soft uh, Baddha Konasana. Give those knees a little flop. Give yourself a little smile. Well done, me. Well done, you. And there's another little balance I remembered about this morning, which is a fun one. Um, and it's uh, sort of, you know, easy to do and difficult to master this one. So it's a lotus flower balance. So we start off, we'll bring the knees a little higher, the feet are gently together, and we'll get the arms. And we're going to see if we can find the arms to come under the legs like this, so that the elbows are gently around the shins. And then we sort of walk the toes back, and we can pick a foot up. I think you can see this. And we can pick a foot up. We've got a nice skin which are there, and we can pick up the other foot. And this is our little lotus flower balance. And the difficult bit is lengthening the spine out of the pelvis so it's not curving and getting your lumbar curve back. And that's quite difficult. Or maybe it isn't. I find it difficult. And then, of course, you can close the eyes. And actually, this is a balance that's quite easy to keep going with the eyes closed. I think the easiest, apart from maybe just standing up. So see if you can close the eyes down. And if you end up going for a little rollabout, great. Enjoy it. Have fun. See if you can roll the shoulders back a bit more and soften them. Relax the face. And let's gently come out. As gently as we can. And maybe we can find that the heels might travel out. And the little feet might end up here. Or we might be flattening the legs out. Might be propping the legs up. Arm blocks. Mm. Uh, I'm just going to very, very gently play with this shape. Let's take the, uh, I'll mirror you for this, take the, take the right hand and just see if it can find the floor inside the right leg. See if we can inhale some length to the spine. Exhale a bit deeper, and then maybe we can add the arm. The, uh, the honesty factor with this pose, because no one knows apart from you, is can you keep both sitting bones heavy? If we roll off one sitting bone to get the toes, uh, yeah, we've got the toes, but we're kind of not doing the work. Uh, we're just yeah, letting the weight of the arm and the head perhaps draw you out of the pelvis. Uh, maybe you can find that. Maybe not. Maybe you can just have a little look at your foot and go, oh, I don't normally look at you from this side. Inhale, arms up. Follow those fingers. Oh, 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 oh. All the way up. Left hand down. Add the arm. And again, at first we're thinking just the weight of the head and the arm draws us out of the pelvis. And as we soften into length, keeping both sitting bones on the floor, maybe we find a foot or maybe we don't find a foot. And either is okay. And we... A goal is to be able to open the chest towards the ceiling and look up here. 
eventually. That might be a standing split, not for me, but that's vaguely where it's going eventually. Inhale it up, again, looking at those fingers, letting the fingers lift you up. You're in the middle again. Maybe lift the bottom of the floor, roll onto the front of the sitting bones. Find the fingers in front. Please be careful here, you can really knock your hamstrings. Gently, gently maybe you find forearms on the mat. Maybe this is a great time to use the block and just pop the forehead on the block and see what the pelvis wants to do. This is all about the pelvis and the thigh bone moving independently and that doesn't come through force. Certainly doesn't come through sudden shocks. So soften here. The more we tell the body that it's safe to be here, the more it goes, oh, okay. Think about something nice and maybe you can lower your prop. Maybe the forehead can come a little further forth. Maybe you can lengthen the sacrum forwards a bit more. And of course, some people are going to be all the way down in like an amazing full split. So we've all got different bodies. Find a place you can remain for another 30 seconds without straining, without scrunching up the face, without the body complaining. Be okay with coming back a little bit so you can go forward some more next week. Engage the heels into the ground a little bit. And then to come up, we're gently walking the fingers back, keeping the head heavy, lifting, of course, from the tummy, re-stacking the spine. Seeing how you feel. And we'll come down onto our backs, so drawing the feet together, gently lowering yourself down onto your back. Lovely. We're just going to do for a counter pose to that a very gentle bridge again. So you know the cues from earlier backs of the hands down, second toes facing forth, gently peeling the back off the ground, really not straining now. Nice breath here, pulling it back out. If you know fish pose, you might like to take a little fish pose here. Right, let's all take a little fish pose. Roll over slightly to the left and get your right hand palm down under your right buttock. Roll onto your right hand and get your left hand under your left buttock. And then pushing the elbows into the ground. Walk the feet forwards and lift the shoulders a little bit. You're coming onto the back of the head or the crown of the head. But keep the weight in the tummy and the elbows. If it feels weird, come out. If the core is very strong, the feet might float. And we might come all the way onto the crown of the head. Find your edge here, just like our leg lift at the beginning. If you take on too much, you're going to strain your lower back. Bend the knees if the legs are straight. Place the soles of the feet back down. Strong through the elbows. Back of the head gently laying back on the mat. Remove the hands. And we'll just take a supine twist to finish. So I've been instructing this quite specifically recently. Um, so we're really trying to leave the shoulders very heavy on the mat. Back of the head very heavy on the mat. And we're going to twist to the right, and I don't mind what the legs do. What we're thinking about is moving the top of the left hip bone to be above the right hip bone on the mat. And you can play with the legs and see what muscles engage and so forth, and that's fine. But by leaving the shoulders relaxed, we have this metric. We, can, we know exactly how much we've moved. And also we're telling the body it's time to rest now because we're winding down. So chance or supine twist to the right. And 
and then inhaling back to center. Scooch the hips a little to the right and drop the knees over to the left. Supine twist to the left. Right hip crest above the left hip crest. Hmm. And coming back to center. And two minutes in Shavasana, let the feet extend away. Let the eyes close. Imagine the sun falling on you as you draw strength from the earth, energy from the sky, and put forth yourself into the world to make it a slightly more beautiful and pleasant place to be. gone over a little bit, so let's energize the fingers and the toes. How are you raising the hands above the head for a stretch? A wiggle, mm, a yawn, and then we'll find our way rolling up to sit. Never, I encourage you to fix one thing in your mind for which you are genuinely grateful. You're allowed more than one if you want. Um, inhaling the hands above the head, exhaling to the forehead and the heart, bowing to each other, to the yoga, to the miracle of life. Namaste. Thank you.